So Plofidumab uh, is um, one of the CD20, CD3 bispecific antibodies that uh, are revolutionizing the treatment landscape of uh, patients with, uh, uh, for patients with B-cell lymphoma, specifically diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. It's one of the two products that are approved in this space, the other being Epcaridumab. Glofidumab uh, has a unique molecular structure in that it uh, features two uh, CD20 binding moieties and one CD3 binding moiety, and one of the CD20 binding moieties is on the same side of the CD3 binding moiety. So it's a, it's a very unique structure, and in vitro, this solution uh, proved to be very um, efficacious in terms of uh, target cell killing. Uh, this drug is administered intravenously on a step-up dosing during cycle one. It's preceded by a single one gram dose of obinutuzumab pretreatment, and then administer in, uh, uh, in a small priming dose at 2.5 milligrams on cycle one, day eight. 10 milligrams on cycle one, day 15, and 30 milligrams, which is a target dose, uh, one week later. Uh, it, it is subsequently administered every three weeks for up to 12 cycles. So the first important uh, feature here is that this is a time-limited therapy uh, that lasts just over eight months um, for patients with uh, relapse diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. In the pivotal trial, glofidumab was tested in 154 patients. That's the study whose the data set of which led to the uh, approval by the FDA and other regulatory agencies worldwide. Uh, and uh, made it so that it's now available uh, for use in this patient population. Uh, in that particular study, uh, where glofidumab was administered at the uh, target dose, uh, the efficacy profile was uh, very promising. Uh, over 50%, 52% of the patients had an objective response and 40% had a complete metabolic response. And focusing on those patients who had a complete metabolic response, we were very uh, pleased to see that the majority, I would say two thirds of those patients, maintained their response at a relatively long follow up. Glofidumab is the bispecific antibody with the longest running uh, uh, track record. Uh, there are some patients who are uh, alive well without treatment and without disease uh, over three years from completion of therapy. And, um, uh, I believe no other uh, bispecific data set can um, uh, boast those kinds of numbers. So it's very reassuring to see that we have patients that could potentially be cured with this approach. We don't know exactly how many. Uh, that was a clinical trial. We are awaiting real-world data to confirm uh, the bounty of those uh, uh, clinical trial data. Uh, but it's certainly uh, everyone's experience uh, that glofidumab has the potential to induce long-lasting complete remissions. The progression-free survival in the uh, uh, pivotal cohort um, uh, was not extremely long, was um, uh, just over four months, but it's the uh, proportion of patients who were progression-free, especially among responders, that I think is the, um, uh, the top-line result in that particular analysis, where you have uh, close to 40% of patients in the old-comer popula study population that are progression-free uh, beyond two years. And as I said, two-thirds of the patients who uh, achieve the complete response at the end of therapy who also are uh, 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 disease-free uh, in the, I would say, relatively long term at this point. Obviously, uh, the approval for uh, this drug came in the third line. So glofidumab is currently uh, approved for use in adult patients with large cell lymphoma, including transformed lymphoma and high-grade lymphoma, who have received at least two lines of prior therapy. Um, and so the natural space for glofidumab in the landscape would be in the third line. That's where uh, the drug competes with other um, you know, assets, other um, uh, products in that space. But I would say uh, we're, we're looking at a single agent activity with 40% complete response rate and a safety profile that after an initial learning curve, um, I think we're becoming uh, more and more comfortable with, uh, and therefore uh, a, a, an efficacy to safety ratio uh, that's becoming more and more favorable. Uh, in my practice, this is certainly 
uh, a drug that I prioritize in the third line for patients that don't have, for example, a clinical trial option or where I don't think a clinical trial is uh, really the way to go. Um, another consideration is also uh, relating to the fact that this is an off-the-shelf product that can be administered uh, from the get-go as opposed to uh, CAR T-cell therapy, which, uh, albeit a very powerful and uh, you know extremely important option, if it's not given in the second line, when it comes to the third line, um, may not be the only choice uh, for these patients. In other words, uh, especially for patients seen at centers that are away from a CAR T cell uh, enabled center or for uh, colleagues who don't have uh, the infrastructural ability to deliver CAR T cells or for patients uh, who cannot wait those four to eight weeks that are necessary to get onto CAR T cell therapy, having an off the shelf product that you know ensures high rates of complete response and um, some of those uh, responses, in fact, the majority of those responses being durable, I think is very comforting for both patients and physicians. So I look forward to seeing real life data on glufidumab. I think he has a uh, great potential as a single agent. And now obviously the next chapter is about glufidumab incorporated into various different standards of care in uh, earlier lines of therapy. Uh, most prominently as a part of an uh, anthracycline-based chemoimmunotherapy for frontline in patients with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. The after uh, uh, two studies, two single arm studies, uh, uh, looking at the addition of glufidumab to our CHOP or our CHP polituzumab, showing very, very promising complete metabolic response rates. Uh, now there's a phase three a randomized control trial called SkyGlow uh, that's ongoing looking at RCHP polituzumab with or without glufidumab in patients with newly diagnosed diffuse large B cell lymphoma and an IPI score of two or greater. So I think we're all very eager to see what that study is going to look like, what the readout is going to be. It's going to be uh, a few years uh, and definitely not around the corner, but, uh, but it's just to give you a sense of uh, where the direction of development is going for products like uh, glufidumab, uh, they have uh, they are endowed with this very very uh, promising single agent potential. So looking forward to the future of this uh, great product.